we're in conversation with Mark Matthews, Head of Research Asia at Bank Julius Baer. Mark, we've got earnings season coming up. That's the next uh, big trigger point that we're tracking. What are you expecting this time around? We've all been waiting to see earnings catch up with uh, the kind of run-up we've seen in stock prices. Uh, are expectations high? Um, you know, I must confess that when it comes to the details, I'm, I'm light on India, and it's, it's not um, any reason other than I've been negligent. So uh, I have not uh, kept on top of the earnings. But uh, what I have been reading from uh, brokers is that the earnings revision ratio is extremely strong in India, I think one of the strongest in the emerging world. And uh, some of them see upside of around 100% in uh, earnings over the next four years. Uh, I haven't had enough time to do my own due diligence, but it's intuitive to me that uh, with uh, you know the new government and uh, uh, inflation, um, you know, sticky but at least not going up anymore, and uh, very solid and prudent policies um, regarding foreign direct investment, uh, et cetera, That we should be seeing uh, more investment. And although the consumer kept going in India throughout all the hard times, even after the scandals, I think the consumer was always very robust. Uh, investment is what has ground to a halt in India. And so uh, I think that there's big room for a bounce in, in the investment uh, uh, sector. And that's where I'd look for uh, the biggest bang for your buck, particularly in infrastructure. So uh, I like the infrastructure sector, and uh, I think that's probably where you see the biggest upside in, in uh, earnings surprises. Fair point. Mark, I, I guess uh, it, it's okay. We, I, I don't want to get into specifics on the earnings. I, actually, I guess my larger question here is, in terms of, as you just mentioned, a four-year outlook or a longer time frame, uh, the, the view is bullish. But in the near term, let's say just over the next couple of quarters, you know, what would be top of mind in terms of making sure that India is going in the right direction, according to you? Hmm. Well, I think uh, I, having just spoken of infrastructure and investment, I want to see a pickup in investment. And if I don't see it, then a major part of my uh, bullish case on India uh, would no longer be there because there's really two engines to the Indian economy. There's inf uh, investment and consumption. So uh, if it doesn't come through, then I'm in trouble, but I think it will. And uh, that's the thing I'll be watching for the most is a pickup in investment. I don't think it's just you. I, th I think a whole lot of FIs are sitting out there watching the investment cycle turn around. And uh, one of the latest recent RBI surveys showed yeah. that CAPEX is actually going to fall 40% this year versus last year. Uh, Mark, you look at the region quite closely and what's really happening across uh, the entire Asian space. How does India fit into the context right now? We've seen some concerns in growth coming in in China. Uh, there's this morning we're hearing uh, some concerns in Hong Kong as well and geopolitical tensions across the board. Do you think all of this will remain extremely heavy and, and weigh on sentiment uh, across the globe? Hmm. I think India ranks very, very highly in emerging markets, and rightly so, for uh, its uh, appeal. It's uh, not expensive compared to its history. It's still only on around uh, 15 times forward earnings. Uh, and uh, for the best return on equity in the world, I think that's actually quite a reasonable multiple to pay. And, uh, you know, there will always be things to worry about in the world, interest rates in the United States, what's going on in China, what's going on in Europe. But um, I think the global backdrop is, is uh, actually a pretty good one. Uh, the U.S. economy is um, recovering, but we have a very bullish, sorry, excuse me, a dovish uh, Federal Reserve and so uh, even though uh, the economy is doing better, I think they'll still be uh, very uh, passive when it comes to uh, monetary policy. I guess the one headwind potentially for India and the rest of the emerging space is the stronger dollar. And if the dollar does actually start to appreciate at a very, uh, at a very fast rate, then that would be enough to, uh, to actually prevent the emerging asset class from uh, continuing to rise. I don't think that it will because I think the Federal Reserve, as I said earlier, is uh, extremely dovish. So you'll hear once in a while people like uh, Richard Fisher or Charles Plosser threatening to raise interest rates, but there's only two uh, of these hawks out of the 10 voting members. Um, so, sorry, a bit, a bit long-winded, but I guess the stronger dollar would be, uh, would be an issue for uh, emerging markets in India. Um, I think it will continue to gradually rise, but it won't go up at a very fast rate.
Mark, in terms of uh, themes that you're bullish on as well, is there a broad uh, you know, brush with which you're looking at, uh, at India in terms of, as you mentioned, you said infrastructure is going to be a, a big part of that. Uh, along with that, anything else that you've got your eye on? Yeah, so there are two, two sectors that I like, and uh, one of them we just talked about, but the other is banks. I like banks, um, financial sector in general, um, for the very simple reason that uh, among the major economies of the world, the one that has the lowest household debt to GDP is India. And so um, obviously there's a lot of uh, sort of cultural uh, thing, thing imbued in that. People don't like to borrow. Um, but I think that over time, as they become uh, more comfortable with the economic outlook and, you know, the, the middle class continues to grow, so people want to buy cars and uh, houses and other things they have to uh, take out loans to afford, um, banks will increase uh, their loans, and, uh, and that will drive their share prices. So I, I like the banking sector a lot in India. Mark, there's going to be a heavy amount of paper that hits the market here in terms of uh, divestment, the government to meet its fiscal deficit target. Uh, do you think there is enough appetite uh, uh, for the PSU, the state-owned PAC, uh, given the, the, the Modi hope and the Modi uh, bets? Uh, do you think there will be enough appetite and demand for the paper that the government puts out? You know, once again, I have to confess ignorance. I haven't looked at the numbers, so I don't know uh, the magnitude uh, that you're talking about. Of course, if a lot of uh, money, uh, if a lot of paper does hit a market, uh, it's a simple case of supply and demand. So um, I can't answer the question because I don't know the number, but I do believe that when we look at the track record in Gujarat of plugging leakage at the uh, state-owned enterprises there, um, they didn't necessarily become the best-run companies in the world. But... Uh, there was a lot of what we call, you know, leakage that stopped uh, as a result of uh, Mr. Modi's tenure. And I think we can see a similar thing um, in the state-owned enterprises, including the banks, um, the public banks. So, uh, yeah, I like them. I like them. Mark, in terms of putting this into context, just, just one more time, I, I know it might be a little repetitive, but I just want to get, a, get this from you. If, uh, if we do see uh, growth improving, we've got some solid figures coming out of the U.S. on Friday. If we do continue to see that trajectory and all eyes on the Fed in the U.S., any risks you perceive to fund flows into emerging markets like India in the immediate term? Yes, of course. The, 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 the major risk, I think, to the emerging market asset class at this juncture is that the best looking currency in the world is the dollar and there's no real reason that should change because the uh, German economy is uh, starting to show uh, signs of weakness and um, that in turn infers a weaker euro. Um, they're really being hurt by the weak yen by the way, the Germans and the uh, yen I don't think uh, should strengthen for any particular reason because the Bank of Japan continues its very aggressive um, quantitative easing program. So when we look at these major currencies around the world, the dollar uh, actually um, should continue to, to rise. The question is how quickly it rises. I mean, the dollar's actually been going up since 2011, and, um, and some emerging markets have done very well during that period of time. So it's not like uh, a rising dollar uh, is, it, it will, will absolutely kill the emerging asset class, but it, it depends on the, on the pace of the ascent. And I'm taking the view, uh, and I read every scrap that comes out of the Federal Reserve, that the doves are still very firmly in control. There was a fight two weeks ago in the last FOMC where the hawks tried to take out this verbiage uh, considerable period, considerable time between when they stopped quantitative easing in October and they first raised interest rates. So the hawks wanted to remove that, um, those two words, considerable period, and uh, they weren't successful. So that, to me, shows that um, the doves are still running the show at the Fed. They will raise rates uh, sometime middle of next year, perhaps a little bit later. But the pace of the rise will be so modest that I think um, you know, the dollar won't go like this. It's more just a gradual controlled ascent. And in that environment, a uh, stock market like India can still do well.